We as a species are a very short period away from the type of technological advancements that would allow us to create a time machine. Presently, I am 25 years old. It is no exaggeration to say that. Within my lifetime, I will be able to travel backwards in time in some manner of speaking. In fact, many of the technologies required to do so are here today, while others are right around the corner. To be clear, when I speak of a time machine, I refer only to a machine that would allow us to travel backwards in time, and even then, only as far backwards as the invention of the machine itself. Like most technologies, early incarnations will not be widely or correctly utilized. Think of the internet before the invention of the World Wide Web, or the wheel before the invention of the automobile. Unfortunately, in the case of the time machine, this will cause holes in the reality of the earliest builds of this particular version of time travel, at the very least. Let me explain. There are two plausible ways that future man will be able to travel backwards in time, both of which, if adopted, would take place in a digital format. The first method, which I will call the matrix method, is a version that would require mastery of considerably more complex technologies than the second method, which we will refer to as the fly on the wall method. The matrix method of time travel would include sophisticated, ultra-high definition avatars of each and every individual human being who chooses to participate in the time capsule, a digital representation of any individual moment in time all over the world. These virtual representations, at least in earliest incarnations of the software environment, would need to utilize an algorithm based on countless hours of interviews with the person who they are supposed to be representing. A contemporary example of this is Bean48, invented by Martine Rothblatt, the creator of Sirius Satellite Radio. Rothblatt made a robotic bust based on her wife, Bina. The bust has a voice recognition software, like a more advanced version of Siri, and is able to understand complete sentences. Then, based on its memory bank, referred to as a mind file, the robot is able to articulate thoughts and have complete conversations, including the ability to form new opinions based on newly learned information. With Moore's Law in place, the technology required to make this type of software readily available is right around the corner, with Bina and, in some respects, IBM Watson serving as its predecessors. At the same time, the world of graphics processing is getting increasingly powerful, leading to lifelike avatars of human beings, as this recent example created by NVIDIA shows. In this way, specialty shops would be able to open up for people who want to opt in to the virtual reality matrix. These people would be thoroughly interviewed by specialists who are able to create a software incarnation of their mind based on a common mind engine. Meanwhile, another specialist would track their facial mannerisms, which is essentially how characters are created in sporting video games today. Technology to make simple 2D caricatures of us based on a couple of photographs is already available in the App Store today. It's not inconceivable, then, to believe that something more powerful than current video game design will be available to the average consumer, or at least via specialty shops, within a couple of decades. Our avatar's appearance would be continuously updated to account for changes in hair, weight, etc., based on a combination of social media images, YouTube, Periscope, and cell phone videos of us, and even a wireless connection to our scales via the Internet of Things. Our digital minds and bodies would be blended together in a software environment that is representative of Earth, much in the same way that Grand Theft Auto makes fairly accurate depictions of Los Angeles and New York. However, a generation from now, software will likely be sophisticated enough to add even more detail to these digital maps, eventually creating each and every city and town to be explored from the comfort of one's own living room. Then, those who opt into the matrix would collectively have their smartphone GPS locations recorded and synced virtually based on time and date with those of people surrounding them so that if someone wishes to travel back in time to say, Friday, April 3rd, 2020, at Mass General Hospital, in any given room of the maternity ward, they would be able to see rather accurately a software depiction of a mother, a father, a grandmother, a doctor, a nurse, and so forth, based on the people who were truthfully in that room at that time. In fact, our social media profiles leading up to, during, and after an event can essentially help us to understand how a particular person was feeling about a particular event. This is to say that John's Facebook profile says he's nervous to be a father, or a home video of Nancy showed her being short with the nurse as her contractions were getting closer together. These things will be recognized by social media spiders of sorts who would crawl almost instantaneously to the time period surrounding the event 
which you wish to travel back to, and incorporate those emotions into the mind file of the avatar in question, making for a more complete simulation of that moment in their life. The main drawback to the Matrix method of time travel is that, because it is a software representation of you, it is not the real you. While virtual reality helmets, in conjunction with a mapping of the environment, likely by some type of panoramic recorder that will allow us for user submission of each individual room to the cloud, and the inclusion of avatars who were in a place at any given time uh, who have a mind file which would be reasonably accurate, is an incredible feat in and of itself. A really close representation of you is still not the same as the real you. This is related to the uncanny valley issue currently plaguing software developers. They're trying to make a resemblance to human beings so uncanny it is to be indistinguishable from true human beings. Unfortunately, all attempts at creating such a representation, as of now, have come up short. In addition to this issue, the number of servers, or at least the amount of digital space required for such a project, is above and beyond what is currently believed to be possible. The amount of memory required to run numerous characters, complete with thoughts, body language, and facial mannerisms, as well as accurately digitally mapping an entire scene alone, would require memory and processing power currently beyond the capability of any consumer computer. Now imagine numerous people trying to access that same Digital Earth server from all over the world. Instead, a large array of servers, some mapping cities, others storing mind files, and still others holding avatars to correspond with those mind files would likely be required. The second method, too, would require a lot of storage for the amount of files required to render a representation of Earth. This fly-on-the-wall method would require the installation of a minuscule 360-degree camera on each corner of a room, as well as surrounding microphones. These cameras would be eternally broadcasting whatever occurs in said room. Then, utilizing an automated real-time video stitching technology like Colorize, a visual and audible depiction of any room or nearly any place can be created to view on a technology like Google Cardboard or the Oculus Rift. When someone chooses to travel backwards in time to say, Jake's Christmas Party 2025, they'll be able to see exactly what went on in that room. With a virtual reality helmet in conjunction with the numerous 360 degree cameras and a 360 degree treadmill that tracks movement using a modified version of what is available in modern video game consoles, one could walk around the room through numerous rooms of a house even and see that day as it occurred. The main drawback here is that they would not be able to interact with the people, only to witness what happened at the event. Another issue here is that many people behave differently when they're on camera. Certainly, if filming your reality becomes commonplace in our society, as it appears evident that it will, people will be rather used to being on camera as we move further and further away from the world of privacy that we also intimately cherish. As a part of growing used to being on camera constantly, people will likely become more comfortable on camera, and the reality we witness on these broadcasts will become as authentic as the one we are presently living in. However, the amount of hard drive space required to stitch videos from four corners of any given room with three to six lenses per camera responsible for the 360 degree capability and 4K or most likely even a higher quality technology for each of the cameras and then saving it for use in a software environment almost definitely would be a huge hurdle. Accessing that through the cloud as well would be difficult because of the sheer size of the file. However, this is something that will likely be resolved with the high-speed internet heading our way in the form of 5G, which is supposed to vastly exceed the speed of even Fios. Finally, the problem is that setting up of cameras and audio recording equipment would be completely voluntary and likely would lack widespread adoption, except by those interested in sharing their events for future generations. It is very possible, though, that people will be able to attend a concert of a 21st century band or the inauguration of a 22nd century politician hundreds and hundreds of years into the future if the technology at least becomes adopted in a way akin to television. With these 360 degree cameras replacing or being used in conjunction with contemporary cameras to film important socio-cultural events. In the same way, future versions of television could become practically interactive with the placement of cameras for a VR audience. These two could be held as a part of our history in the digital time machine. Imagine, for instance, being able to travel back in time and sitting in the living room of Jerry Seinfeld as Kramer enters the room, or watching from across the couch at the Central Perk on Friends. Future generations will be able to live inside of their favorite sitcoms, even if only for a moment. 
Ultimately, as more and more cameras find their way into our world, at stoplights, in parking garages, and numerous security cameras, 360 degree viewership of entire states can become possible if widespread implementation were to take place. I've created this video for one reason, to plant the seed of innovation. Any group of people knowledgeable in the aforementioned fields could band together and literally create a way for us to witness times past, the birth of your first child, your favorite band's biggest concert, or even being able to visit that deceased grandmother again. The implications of this technology are huge. While the majority of the technology necessary to create this exists, they are, for the most part, in their infancy. Computer hardware, even, is in its infancy if we look at the grand scheme of the existence of humanity. I know that this goal can be achieved, and it starts with us. Let's build this thing.